Nate, Nate, obviously a, a fantastic performance from you tonight. I mean, a very, very exciting fight. Give me, give me this feel right now. Your first UFC win, a big moment in anybody's career. What's what's the feel like for you right now? I mean, I feel good. I mean, I feel uh, like uh, I could just erase that first fight. I mean, that first fight was shit for me. And this is the real show that I bring to the table. You know what I mean? I, this is the kind of fight that I can put on for the fans. The first fight, of course, you didn't get a chance to show. Like you said, it wasn't a lot of fun for you, I'm sure. What, what was the mentality like after that? I mean, how do you how do you bounce back from something like I that? Told my, I told my people, I was like, well, I can't go no worse than that. <laughs> That's why I've been on the ride back like, hey. The first day was the worst day. I mean, I can't go no, I mean, that's why, so it's all this easy from now on out. I mean, I, the way I fight, finish or be finished. I mean, that's what it is. No question. For a lot of people, it might've been their first time watching you fight tonight. So, I mean, the, the showmanship in there, talk about, you know, just kind of how you adapted that style. Why, why that's the way you like to fight. So, so wild and, and different than what we see a lot of And I just love to have my fun, man. It's like, I already fight like I missed this shit, man. Like I'm 70, looking back. Man, I wish I could come back. That's how I fight, like, man. I just try to put it all online and have a good time. And when I'm done with this, I'll be proud of it so I can hang it up and not stick around. You know, some guys just don't really get it out their system, so they stick around and stick around. I'm going to do my thing, and I'm out. Nice. So much blood in there. At any point, is is it a distraction at all? Or are you thinking what like what's what's going on? His blood was in my mouth. I was like I was trying to spit it out. I mean, man, that was a good one. And obviously, Darren's a tough guy. Did you, yeah, did you yeah. feel like you had done enough? I mean, did you say, I, I, I definitely have done enough to win this? I had no doubt in my mind that I didn't win that fight. I knew I won that fight. And uh, hands down, I mean, uh, I won that fight, no problem. Last, last thing for me, now that you've got this first win under your belt, what's, what's next? Lay out the plan. Shoot, I would like to fight. Uh, there's this guy in uh, Ingushetti of the Republic of Ingushetti. When I used to fight for M1 Global, he was a 35 champion, 12 and no. I think he's 2 and 0 in the UFC. Uh, I can't pronounce his name. It's something. Envelope, uh, Mosfov, something like that. Uh, I'm sure y'all could look him up. Uh, and. Uh, just get the call, go chill, hopefully get that bonus for the fight of the night. And uh, man, just sit by the phone, wait for my manager to call. Hey, right here. Uh, you, you spoke about your M1 experience, but have you ever fought in an empty arena like this for in, or in front of no one? I mean, not for money. <laughs> That's <crazy>. You know, <laughs> and then uh, Darren is also he calls himself the damage, and in his words, it's because he takes so much damage in every one of his fights. So he apparently has tied the record for most featherweight fights in UFC history. So, uh, what was it like actually fighting a man who can take uh, so much damage and not go away? I knew that if they hit him and hurt him, don't get don't get excited. Just keep on hitting him. Don't get overzealous and try to finish him because uh, he's going to he's gonna stick around. He's a tough cat. He's fought the who's who's of the division, and uh, I think I just uh, put a stamp to say the Nate the Train is here. And then you were obviously screaming uh, for Dana in the octagon. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Oh, yeah, let's talk to him back there. Yeah, it was cool. What do you have to say? I said, can I get that 50 stacks? That's what I said. I need that bonus. Anything else? Uh, Nate, uh, you obviously felt very comfortable in the octagon tonight. Um, at any point, did you feel threatened by Darren Nelkins? That first takedown, I was like, oh, shit. I got took down. Uh, but then after I got back up, it couldn't take me down again. So I felt good with that. And um, my people, we trained for this moment. We prepared for this moment. We was warmed up good for this moment. Yeah, we were sparring in the back before this moment just to get ready for this moment. And uh, we proved that uh, we are elite 145-pound fighter in this world. That, that type of energy um, kind of taunting your opponent, is that something that you've, you've done before where you're just having fun? I'm just to... having fun. And I, just how I fight, and, uh, I was like, man, it's quiet in here. If I yell some shit, everybody will hear me. So, I mean, I was like, yeah, Dana! And I was like, damn, he could really hear me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Great fight tonight. Thank you. Good. We're good. Thank y'all, guys. Hey, Nate, congratulations. You proved that the train can hold up to the damage. 
Um, very bluntly, that was a wild fight. You guys are exchanging. He's shouting. Can you just explain for people just what it was like from your perspective to be in that crazy one? Hey, that's hey, normal for my fight. That's how I do. That's what I'm going to bring to the table. That's, that's what I do, baby. What were you thinking as he's in there and he's shouting for Dana White as he's bleeding? How did you take that? Were you offended or were you just, hey, oh, this is fucking crazy? I was in there shouting for Dana. Oh, yeah. I guess, uh, were you just wanting him to make sure he was paying attention? Oh, man, the crowd was, there was no crowd, so I figured I'd entertain it, I'd do it all. I'd just be loud, clap, and I'd just have a good time. That's what I was mainly trying to do, just have a great fucking time. Now, can I ask, this is your first UFC win. Um, the first one didn't go your way. Can you just talk about, I guess, the pressure to just finally notch that first one under your belt? Oh, no pressure, man. I'm the prize fighter, win, lose, or draw. This is my life. I mean, I live my life. I never make excuses, never take an easy road, never take a shortcut. And uh, that's what it means the most to me. Winning and losing. How many times Muhammad Ali lose real quick? You tell me. Nobody really knows. They just remember the great moments he put on for us. I mean, that's what people remember. And uh, that's, what I'm a, that's what I'm gonna bring to the table. Great moments, exciting moments. I'm gonna fight my ass off. Final question. You set that bar pretty high. It's still just the prelims, but do you think you got that fight of the night bonus locked in? I'm praying to God that I get that fight of the night bonus. I yelled at Dana. I seen him walking in the hall where I was begging him for, please, sign the check. I need it, babe. I really need that 50K. I do. Hey, congratulations, Nate. Thank you. Uh, next question will go to James Lynch with the score. James, your line is open. Nate the Train, how's it going, man? James, what up, baby? How you doing? Uh, you know, Gabriel talked about it, their first UFC victory. This is a long time coming for you. You're a guy that really put in the time, not only in the regional scene, but also internationally for M1. Have you been able to just soak this in and, and just enjoy the victory right now? Man, hey, I'm just doing interviews. I'm, I'm so happy that I'm doing an interview with you right now, man. What's up, James? Uh, man, you know how I do. That's a normal fight for Nate the Train. I didn't get to show it last time, but I got to show it this time. Got a little blood leaking. I got to get that fixed. And and that was the type of performance. I mean, I'm sure you would have liked a quick win, but are you glad in some ways it was this war that was bloody? I mean, this is a memorable fight, and, and it's really a testament to your style, if anyone's watched you over your career, as being a guy that really goes out there and puts on a show. That's exactly what I – man, I left – when I left the airport, told my wife, I was like, we going to get bloody. She's like, shut up. I was like, nah, we're getting bloody, baby. And, I mean, that's the fight that I want. I want – when my manager called me weeks ago and told me about who I was fighting, I was like, oh, it's going to be one hell of a damn fight right here. How was it without the crowd? You're a guy that's used to being either in enemy territory or having all the Nate the Train fans out. Uh, what was that like? Because that must have been a little bit different for you. I was heard. I, was, I could just whisper and hear everything. It was crazy because I was like, I, was, I could hear their corner telling him what to do. And it was like, okay, he about to shoot. All right. Shoot on him! All right, I, I guess he's about to shoot in the next five, ten seconds. So, uh, absolutely no difference. I mean, once you lock yourself in there with a man that tries to hurt you, nothing else really matters. <clears throat> and, and last one for me, who's next for you? I mean, you're a guy that, you know, you love the style matchup. It's got to be something that's going to, you know, bring out the fight in you. Elkins certainly did that. Is there anyone that comes to mind as far as the next opponent? Man, anybody, really, anybody. And I imagine as soon as possible, you want to get back in there and keep yeah. this momentum going? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to stay active. I'm not trying to go through the fat boy stage. I'm trying to just stay <laughs> grinding. Excellent. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, James. All right. Thank you very much, Nate. You are good to go. All right. Thank you.